So in this video, I want to talk about what drives communication, what actually makes you attractive, what makes all the dating techniques you may have learned work. For example, you may have learned banter, push, pull, cocky, funny. Uh, you may have learned to nag. You may have learned to tell deep stories from your life. You may have learned to listen better. But what makes all of that work? And why does all of that work for some people and none of it work for others? Why do some people learn every technique under the sun and they still can't get anywhere with women. Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about just that very thing. You see, years ago, I had that very problem. I had the problem of not being able to attract women, of pushing them away no matter how much I learned. I learned a lot of techniques, I tried a lot of different things, I tried to be funny, I tried to listen, I tried to be giving, I bought them things, I pulled away and played distant, and none of it worked. And I couldn't understand why. So I was hanging out with my friend Daniel and I asked him one time, I said, how do you get all, this? by the way, Daniel's a natural. And I asked Daniel the natural, how do you get all of these women? How do you get them to like you? Because they chase them, they pursue them, they talk about them, they gossip about them. And he said, it's really simple, man. You just talk to them. And I thought, that's, that's horrible advice. Like, that's what I do. I try talking to them. I try pulling away. I try ignoring them. And none of it has worked. But for Daniel, all of it seemed to work. He didn't understand why. So I decided to move in with Daniel. And I got an apartment with Daniel. And I immediately noticed when he put himself on a match, he'd never, I don't even know if he'd been on a dating site before, he started getting dates like crazy. And I remember asking him to see his profile and I thought, damn, this guy, even in his profile, he's super attractive. I wanted to go out on a date with him. It was kind of crazy uh, from reading his profile. and. I asked myself, what is it that Daniel has that I don't? And as I watched him bring home girl after girl as he was dating and meeting women on match, it began to come to me. And I ended up running into a several different teachers at the time, and they all started to put the picture together for me. But there was one, well, two, I'll say two key distinctions, two key distinctions that really stood out. Daniel was in feeling. He could feel a lot. And then what I mean by that is he was connected to his heart. He'd done a lot of meditation. He was kind of new agey without being new agey. You know what I mean? He was a bad boy. He'd, he'd been in prison. He had uh, done all this crazy stuff, but he also meditated a lot. And he was very strict and disciplined in his practices. And it wasn't this new agey woo woo kind of meditation. It was like, no, I'm a serious hardcore. Uh, and he owned the shit out of it. And there was an attitude to Daniel. So Daniel had this attitude, but he also had this big open heart. A lot of feeling, a lot of warmth coming off of him. And I began to realize that Daniel had probably two of the deadliest combinations. One, he could feel a lot. He could feel his body. He could relate from his body. He could communicate from his body. And we're going to talk about what that is. And he also was free from outcome. If a woman wasn't treating him right, he set boundaries fast. He said no. He'd pull away and say this is over. He'd end relationships quick. He didn't put up with shit. And sometimes I'd even see him laughing at women. I'd see women get mad at him and then they'd want to have sex with him. It was the wildest thing. And now it totally makes sense to me. But back then I didn't quite get it. So these, this combo, these two things, this ability to feel a lot and this ability to not give a shit were really powerful. And I don't mean not give a shit, like he really cared, but he was detached from outcome. He wasn't detached, he was detached from outcome. Think about the difference in that, okay? Detached from outcome means he can care fully in the moment. So let's think about this. Let's go a little deeper with this. What is feeling? Well, most guys that have trouble with women are overly analytical or disconnected from their bodies. They can't feel their heart. They can't feel their legs. They can't feel their body. They can't relate to their bodies. Think about it. The jock gets the girl all the time. Why? Because he can relate to his body. He can feel. He can um, express emotionally. And so what does that mean? For somebody in their head, like I was, that meant nothing to me when I first heard it. I had a teacher after Daniel explained it to me, he said, you're not in feeling, Brian, you're in your head. You're in the future or you're in the past. And when you're relating to another human being, you wanna be in the now, as much as humanly possible. Maybe not to the level of enlightenment, like an enlightened sage, but to some degree, you wanna be in this now, really enjoying the human being in front of you, especially a beautiful woman if you wanna attract her, really enjoying the beautiful woman in front of you. And so I didn't know how to do that. In my mind, that was a concept. I remember trying to practice being grateful 
And it was a concept in my mind. I would write down things I thought I should be grateful for, but I'd only get more frustrated. So I wasn't really grateful for the things I was writing down. Again, I didn't know how to feel. So to understand feeling a little bit better, as I began to learn more about this, I began to notice some specific things. One, people that can feel really, don't put a lot of energy into thought. They, they go into a little bit more of like social flow states. They, they drop down into the core of their body, their heart, their stomach, and they, and they go down low in their body, even down to their turn on, which is in the hip area. And they relate to the other human being through what they're feeling through their body. I'm going to say that again. They relate to the other human being through what they're feeling through their body and not through what they're thinking. So let's put, let's let's demonstrate this. When I used to be overly analytical, I would walk up to a woman and I would lock there in yoga. They call these locks, these little points that tighten up in the chest, maybe because I pull back into the throat just a hair, tighten in the stomach. Maybe you do this. And I start talking from back here. Hey, my name is Brian. What's yours? Where are you from? Hey, you know, you're uh, that. What are you drinking? And I would get nervous like that because because all that energy was running out there. Let's say I didn't even get nervous. Let's say I practiced and I got good at my lines because I, I hit this stage too where I was really good at saying lines really well, but I was still in my head. So I would walk up and say, hey, what are you drinking? Oh, that looks really good. And I remember, I always, I've said this before, I used to call women trouble all the time. I'd walk up, hey, you look like trouble. you know, And you could feel me talking from back here. Now, compare that difference. If I drop down and I relax in the throat a little bit, I relax in the chest a little bit, I relax, I'm gonna just relax in the chest and I'm like, hey, you look like trouble. Or I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at myself and make sure I'm, I'm nailing it. Hey, you look like trouble. Versus, hey, you look like trouble. You could feel the difference. One's pulled back and one's more in the moment. And if I drop down even lower, and I, I don't use that line anymore, by the way, I just use it because it's funny because, you know, I used to use it all the time. It could be as simple as if I, if I stay in my heart, I might say something like, hey, what are you drinking? Versus, hey, what are you drinking? You feel that disconnect? It's that subtle energy is different. And we're going to get to the set, a third, another stage of this. So if you stay tuned to the end, I'm going to put it together with all the techniques you've learned. So you can understand how banter, cocky, funny, all this works. And how enjoying a woman really works, okay? So just kind of watch and hang with me a little bit. Um, so I come down a little bit lower and I, and I say into the stomach and the heart. And that's where I'm letting the energy relax down lower in my body. I'm like, hey, uh, you look like trouble. Hey, what are you drinking? Or I come down all the way down even deeper. And I'm like, hey, you look like trouble. Hey, you look like trouble. Hey, what are you drinking? You know, that's... That's interesting. Where are you from? That's an interesting accent. Yeah, I, I get it. I know exactly what you're talking about. Really? Why? Oh my God, tell me more about that. Do you see how there's a sense of connection? There's almost like a flow between me and you when I talk that way. Now watch, feel the difference. Hey, where are you from? Oh, interesting. Tell me, tell me more about that. Oh, okay. Nice. And you feel how there's an upward energy and a back and up. It could be numbed out too. It could be more like this. This is where I'm going to go this way and numb. So interesting. Yeah. What are you drinking? Oh, tell me more about that. Oh, I, I see what you mean. That's really interesting versus if I drop down again and I drop lower in the body and I begin to enjoy the human being in front of me, imagining I'm enjoying this person in front of me and I'm really connecting to them. And I'm like, hey, tell me more about that. Really? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. No, no. There's a playfulness to it. There's a real energy of enjoyment. I had to learn to enjoy another human being, which means feel the core of my body. Cause you can't enjoy another human being unless you can feel your heart unless you can feel your stomach, because this is where you feel things in your body. Unless you can feel down your hips, your turn on. It's, it's basically utterly impossible, okay? So that's number one, is I learned to feel. Now, I got a lot of you guys out there that actually can feel, but you pull back because you're scared, because you're attached to outcome. That's number two. If you're really attached to outcome and you walk up and say, hi, you know, there's something about you. You go really direct, you know, I just had to come over and meet you. There is something about you. What's your name? You're going to go into fear because you're attached to outcome. If she rejects me, it's going to be bad. 
if she doesn't reject me or if I if I bail and run away, I'm going to beat myself up. No matter what happens, you're going to lose. If she says yes to me, then I got to worry about taking her out on a date and actually impressing her, making her happy. So what happens is as you get closer, you go into anxiety and fear to the goal and then you pull up and out or back or numb out or you get all weird with energy because you're attached to outcome. So step number one is learn to feel and step number two is is get unattached from outcome. Learn to let go of all the the outcome that's coming up. Learn to process all those emotions because it's really, it's all it is. It's stuff in your subconscious mind telling you this little girl over here can hurt you and she can't. It's all, it's all a concept in your mind. It's a story you're telling yourself and it's all based on your past. And that's where the attachment comes from. The attachment comes from trying to prove you're good enough because of some trauma from the past, trying to prove you're special enough because of some drama from the past, whatever it is. And then you go into your head, you pull back, you pull up, you pull out a feeling because you don't want to be hurt. Look, if I'm back here, hi, then it's, then nothing hits my heart. I can't be hurt. Nothing hits my emotional body. I can't be hurt. Okay. So those two things become really important. Now, all these pickup techniques you've learned, uh, being direct, being indirect, uh, pulling, uh, nagging, pulling away, whatever. When you get into feeling, all that stuff starts to work. And think about it. If I walk up and I'm like, hi, my name's Brian. What's your name? Oh, interesting. Where, where are you from? And we start having a conversation. And let's say I start leaning in too much. because This is another one that happens. I'm going to demonstrate it right now. So tell me more about that. Oh, interesting. Hi, where are you from? And there's a sense of leaning in too much. Like I'm going to put too much energy on the person. Then... What I'll do is I'll literally break and pull my energy away and put it way over there somewhere away from her, connect to something else, and then I'll come back. Hey, reset myself. I will, I will not let myself lean in too much because that too will signal to the beautiful woman in front of you that you're needy, that you're really wanting something from her. So all those techniques, they work. Think about that. That's like a rock step from pickup. That's the ability to, hey, I'm connecting and you feel her, uh, her, some, her energy pulling back or you're leaning in too much. So you connect, you pull away, you reset, and then you come back all refocused again. And it works. How about banter? I don't know. You're really cute. There's something about you. And then push pull. So that's a pull. And then I'm like, you know, I changed my mind. I don't like you. Yeah, you're, you're not my type. So there's a sense I still have this connection, this feeling going on, but I'm saying I don't like you. It's incongruent. It doesn't make sense. And that's what makes it fun. You are such a dork while I'm looking at her and creating a little tension with her. I could be like, you're such a dork. Take the energy away a little bit and then come back and bring it back and feeling again. But if I'm in my head or I'm disconnected from feeling I or I'm attached to outcome, I can't do any of that in my head. You know, you're such a dork. It's just weird. It's weird when you do it, right? And this is the problem I always had before. Now it's so easy to start conversations and enjoy people and relax with people, including beautiful women, and just to hold that eye contact and have little moments. Almost these little moments where when you really get into a nice zone, it's like, who are you? You're interesting. You don't say that out loud. It just kind of says it with your eyes. And then you might take it away for a sec, drop into a little more feeling here, and she can feel you doing that. And then you come back. That's what feeling does. So as you learn to feel your body more, you get more embodied. And that's what it comes down to. As you get more unattached from outcome, you get more embodied. And as you do both of those things, you get better and better at using all the, the, the techniques, push, pull, banter, rapport, deep rapport, vulnerable stories, whatever it is, at doing all of that. Because that's ultimately what it comes down to is you going out to bring fun, have fun, enjoy the human being in front of you. And whether, you, whether you're playfully rejecting them or pulling them in, none of it really matters. It's just you enjoying the human being in front of you and them enjoying you. Or let's put it this way, you enjoying the hot, sexy, beautiful woman in front of you while she enjoys you as a hot, sexy, connected guy, connected man, let's say. Okay, hopefully you've enjoyed this, this principle. Now, you're probably asking, I should put this on the end. How do you get into more feeling? That's why I teach so much releasing. Definitely check out either my ebook or my releasing program and uh, revealing process. 
And that helps you to process the deep emotions inside or go back and look at my YouTube videos where I take you through these revealing process, these guided revealing process where I teach it. I have tons of YouTube videos on this stuff that's free. And uh, or you could look at Hawkins book, Letting Go, and, and, and I'll go deeper into some of these principles as time goes on. But I wanted to encourage you in this video to really take a look at embodiment. Another way to develop your embodiment is just get out and move. Whether it's yoga, whether it's dance, something that inspires you, whether it's uh, skiing, whether it's uh, snowboarding, get out and practice feeling your body. And as you learn to feel your body more, get in front of the human being, in front of the human being in front of you and feel, okay? But if you want an actual course on how to do it, check out my course called, uh, called the Revealing Process on the Revealing Process. And uh, if you want principles behind embodiment, check out the Art of Fearless Seduction. Now, hopefully this video wasn't all over the place for you. Hopefully you really enjoyed it. And what I really want from this video, I'm asking you to do this, is to go down into the comment section and ask, tell me what you want to know more of. Because this year I'm not putting out any live programs. So it's going to be all about these YouTube videos and, and some products. We'll have some products for sale. But for the most part, I'm going to be putting out YouTube videos that really clarify this concept. So if you want more information on any aspect of this and you want me to go a little deeper, maybe I should do a little revealing course for dating or something where I play just a little bit each week, then you better put the comment in the video because I'll be checking these comments out. So again, hopefully you like this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to hit that bell notification. May And so you don't miss any of the content, by the way, because we've got a lot of great content coming and make sure to share. And as I said before, comment below. And with that said, Remember, only the confident really live, and I'll see you in the next video.